Whether you're a seasoned DaVinci Resolve vet or you've finally switched over from another editor, you should always be looking for ways to improve your workflow, save a little bit of time, or best yet, improve your overall video quality. Well, today I'm gonna to talk about five of my favorite DaVinci Resolve plugins to help you do just that. Let's get into it. All right, so this first one is for something that we do all the time, like right now. And this plugin is free. A very common technique that we do all the time is the zoom. Maybe we wanna emphasize a point or we wanna zoom in to something that we're showing to kind of highlight it. Rather than keyframing it by hand, we're gonna use a plugin called Magic Zoom Pro from Mr. Alex Tech. Don't worry, I'll link to it down in the description. Once you install it, you can just search for Magic Zoom in your effects library and then press this little star so you can save it because you're gonna be using it a lot. You can add it to a clip directly, but it's actually best used in conjunction with an adjustment clip. So drag the adjustment clip to a new track where you want that zoom, and then you can drag the magic zoom effect onto the adjustment clip, and then it'll complete the zoom action for the length of that adjustment clip. So if you want it to be shorter or longer or timed differently, you can just adjust the length of that adjustment clip. There's also a bunch of customization you can do, like you can add camera shake or motion blur, but there's also six built-in presets, so you can quickly cycle through those. A little bonus tip, if you click this little drop down here and then select Fusion Overlay, you can adjust where the center point of that zoom is with this little X. So if you wanna punch straight into your face, you just move the X to the center of your face. Okay, next up, let's talk audio. Because let's face it, sound design is hard. You can have the best sound effects in the world, but often when you drop them in as is, they sound a little bit like clinical. You could change the volume, but that's still not super realistic. If you were an audio engineer, maybe you do a lot of EQing and mixing to get things right. But I don't know about you, I'm not an audio engineer. So instead, I've got the Soundly Placeit plugin, also free also linked in the description. The plugin basically does what it says. It places your sound in different locations. So we just drag it onto our clip and then this little control panel is gonna pop up and it has three main controls, speaker, place, and wall. Speaker will make it sound like it's coming out of that selected speaker. So you can have audio coming out of earbuds or walkie talkie, for example. This could be really good for like, if you wanna make it sound like you're on the phone with someone. Place will either set the distance of the sound or place it inside of a room. Wall is kind of like making it sound like there's a wall in between you and the sound. It's effectively the same as a low pass filter, but it's just a much easier UI. So how could we use this? Well, let's say you're working on an edit of the time you proposed to your girlfriend and you wanna make, you know, it, it look nice with some, some sound design and stuff. Oh my God! <laughs> We've got a ratchet sound, a couple of whooshes in there, a riser, some waterfall sounds, and then some in-camera audio of Britta being very surprised and quite happy. So like, maybe I want to make that waterfall sound like it's further away rather than just like right next to me. I'll drag on the Place It plugin and then set the space to far. And maybe sometimes this whoosh transition is a little bit too much. What if we put it in a cave and then behind a little bit of a wall? I also know that sound effects can be pretty difficult to find. So I actually worked with a sound engineer to create a whoosh sound effect pack, which includes all the whooshes in this little sequence along with a bunch more, and I'll link to that in the description. Best yet, it's completely free to download. If you want, you can toss me a small tip or you can subscribe as a free way to say thank you. Next in my plugin list is called Motion VFX. This is actually a really big suite of plugins for creating super easy and customizable motion graphics, titles, callouts, color grades, and a whole bunch of other tools. There are a ton of them to choose from, so I won't go through all of them in this video because that would take forever, but some of my personal favorites are M Tutorial, for example. Since I'm obviously doing a lot of tutorial stuff like this, it's a great way to zoom in and highlight different things like we've been doing in this video already. Another really great one is the M Callouts plugin, which has a ton of callouts that integrate seamless, super seamlessly with the Fusion tab. Once you have the desired callout, there's this little icon in the effects panel that opens up Fusion. Now we can add a tracker, track our subject, and then right click on the center point and select connect to, and then that tracker position that we just made. Now that callout point is following the position and it moves while the text stays static. There are honestly so many more plugin packs and I pretty much use motion VFX for all of my motion graphics now, but there's like 40 to 100 effects in each pack and then there's like dozens of different packs. So I'll link to those in the description and they have breakdowns for each pack individually 
on the little like sales page for each of those. Moving on to one of my all time favorites is a plugin that I use pretty much every day to create custom captions. If you're doing any amount of short form video, you know that captions are pretty much necessary these days. There are a lot of tools out there that help with captions. There's like CapCut and the Captions app, but a lot of those have kind of one key problem and that's that they all look the same. I don't want my captions to look like Mr. Beast captions or Alex Hermosi captions. I want them to look like Meshna captions. Now, DaVinci Resolve Studio does have a built-in auto captions function, but this one kind of suffers from the same thing as all these other tools, and that's that the level of customization is severely lacking. Enter Snap Captions, which is a free plugin that is made by this wonderful fellow named Orson Lord. Again, I'll link to that one in the description, and the process of getting it set up is a little bit convoluted, so hang in here with me for just one second. First, you wanna set your in and out point on the timeline where you want your captions to appear. Then go to Timeline, Create New Timeline from Audio Track. Pro tip here, I always like to set the max character per line to one because this makes the captions go one word at a time as opposed to like a huge string of captions. Once you generate, it'll think a bit and then spit out all the captions on the timeline. Now you want to add a text plus effect to your timeline. And text plus is great because you can customize it in any way you see fit. Obviously you can set the font, but you can also add a bunch of effects. Like you could add a drop shadow or a pop-in effect, for example. Once you've customized it to your liking, you now want to create a new bin in your project and name it Snap Captions, and then drag test the text plus clip into that folder. Now go to Workspace, Scripts, Comp, Snap Captions. There's a couple of more customization options that you can do here, like I like to remove punctuation, and I usually set everything to uppercase, and then hit Generate. It'll now spit out all the captions on a new track and disable those junky auto Da Vinci captions for you as well. Okay, let's talk color grading. This color grade that you're seeing right now is kind of my normal just base color grade when I'm in my studio. It's not too stylized, but I don't really have a whole lot of color going on in here, so for this, it works. But maybe you do wanna get a little bit more fancy and maybe you want to emulate a film look, for example. Well, there's no better way to do that than with the Dehancer plugin which is a really powerful plugin that's kind of designed to recreate some of the different film stocks and take away sort of that digital look that we get from modern cameras. We honestly could do like a 25 minute tutorial on Just Dehancer alone. And this video is already getting a little bit too long, so I won't do that now. But if you are interested in something like that, let me know in the comments. To use Dehancer, you typically want to add it towards the end of your node tree after you've done kind of your basic corrections. I, ha I like to have mine sitting after my color space transform, and then I usually have a sharpening node after it as well. In effects, we can then drag Dehancer onto that new node, and you can already see how much it does. It kind of like auto-populates some stuff in there. Most of the sauce comes from the film profile section. There's a ton of popular film stocks to choose from, and Kodak Vision, for example, is a really popular choice since films like Oppenheimer do make use of it. For this particular shot, I like Fuji Color Pro 400H, and then we can use the expand panel to set the white and black point, which to be fair, could be done in the primaries as well. And then Dehancer has some really good high quality film grain to choose from. Just note that it does take a lot of processing power. So if you have the Dehancer film grain enabled, it's gonna slow things back pretty, slow things down on the playback pretty considerably. Dehancer is also the best way I've found to add halation, which is kind of that like, glowy red look that film can kind of get sometimes. Uh, and if you go down to that halation module, you can check the mask mode box, and this you'll be able to kind of see and more finely tune where it shows up. Then you can select like which film style of halation works as well. I like the eight millimeter ones personally. There's a ton of other stuff too, like there's bloom and film damage and these film overlays. It's honestly got it all. Again, I'll link to that in the description. And although this video is also not sponsored by Dehancer, I do have a promo code Meshna that you can use to get 10% off. All right, so these are all the plugins that I'm using on a regular basis, but I'm sure that I missed some. So if you have a favorite, please let me know in the comments and I'll check it out. And while you're down there again, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.